Welcome back to Mountain Connections. There's something about food and family that transcends generations and creates favorite memories. Here today to cook with us a favorite family recipe is Elise Hirsch. She's our traffic manager here at Park City Television. We've been looking forward to this all week, but before we get started, tell me about this great recipe. All right, so this is, so it's manicotti. Mm -hmm. And this is my grandma's recipe, and she always made a crepe-style manicotti. So I think we're all kind of used to the manicotti you get at an Italian restaurant where you roll up the pasta and it's stuffed, but this is with crepe. So we're going to make the crepe shell, stuff it with cheese, put some tomato sauce over it, and bake it in the oven. So It looks delicious. Tell me a little bit about your grandmother. Yeah, so she's Italian-American, and, and this there's is, a picture of her right now on the screen. <laughs> yeah, so this is something that she would make around the holidays. So. Uh, I actually scaled the recipe down to about a quarter of her recipe because she would feed an army of extended family for the holidays when she made this. Um, and this is the crepe style. Like I said, it's, not, it's more like traditional, really delicate um, versus the like the noodle that you typically get in restaurants. So she was Italian. She's so Italian. So she cooked a lot of traditional Italian. Oh yeah, she cooked a lot of Southern Italian. So my she's from a little bit north. My grandpa's from Sicily. She, when they got married, learned all the Southern Italian recipes to feed him. And <laughs> so. She learned from uh, a lot of the recipes from my grandfather's mother and more of the Southern Italian style. What is Southern Italian style? A lot of what you do see in, in Italian restaurants here in the U.S., just like really hearty sauces, like heavy, hearty, like cheesy, you know, just Yum. kind of like what we expect when we think <laughs> Italian, actually. But. Oh, I yeah. love it. Well, <laughs> let's get started. This just looks spectacular. It smells delicious. I'm excited to dig in. All right. So uh, we're going to make the crepes in a minute. I have the pan heating up with the oil. So first we're going to do the filling. And the filling is going to be a half pound of ricotta cheese. I can help, too. I'll try not to mess anything up. <laughs> Let's see. Can... Like, don't touch it. OK. <laughs> oh, I might have you stir this in just a second no, for I'm not, me. I, I don't love to cook. I like to bake <laughs> cooking. So if you're a little hesitant, I understand. <laughs> and then there's a half pound of mozzarella cheese on there. I save a little bit to sprinkle on top. And we're going to do a quarter cup of Pecorino Romano. This is actually a Locatelli, which is my family's favorite brand. Like in the recipe, my grandma just wrote cheese, and we all know what she's talking <laughs> what about. Kind? It's this Locatelli Pecorino Romano. Um, and then about a tablespoon of parsley, one egg, and some salt and pepper to taste. So I'll put a little bit on, and then we can oh, taste it. It <laughs> really smells good. I'm surprised <laughs> at how fragrant it is. All right. Do you want to stir this? For I me? can stir. Yeah, you, just to get sure. it all incorporated. Oh, okay. And so now we're going to do the shell. So I I prepped a few in advance. So I have the batter, and the batter is super simple. It's just um, six eggs, uh, two thirds cup water, two thirds cup flour, and a little salt. And you want it to be sort of um, like a like a thin cake batter. In consistency. So pretty, kind of a traditional crepe recipe then. Yeah, very eggy. Um, it's going to be kind of nice and light. And I put mine in a blender because I, with so little flour and a lot of eggs, sometimes it doesn't mix and very well. And with the well. flour, there are, is a little bit of clumping, so that's actually a really good idea. Um, I typically... I had a good idea. <laughs> you, had a, you had a great idea. I had a great idea. <laughs> so <And> we're cooking. <laughs> I typically, it's about a quarter cup is what I use. I typically measure the first one just to get a feel for how much I'm putting in. And then after that, you kind of get, you get used to it because you make, you make quite a lot of these. To, <laughs> I can't imagine how she, my grandma way. would do it for the holidays. Like I said, this is just a quarter of what she Was she in the kitchen all day long? Oh, she would prep for a week leading up really? to the holidays. Oh, Baking gosh. and cooking, yeah. Oh, I wish I could have Ooh. enjoyed that in one of those feasts. So we're going to pour that in there. It's a little hot. And we're going to swirl it around to kind of coat the pan. We want a nice thin layer. And then we're going to let that cook for a minute. Basically just until... So you basically see swirl the pan. Yeah, kind of swirl the pan. And just try to get it up on the edges. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Just have it be as thin as possible, right? Exactly. That's the goal. And so we'll give it a sec. It will basically once it no longer looks wet, we're gonna we're gonna flip it. I think my okay. Pan, this is the scary. Well, it'd be yeah, scary it's for me. It's probably not scary for you. Needs a second longer. <laughs> the edges. I mean, if you oil the pan, would you use like a, a nice uh, an oil that's good for high heat? I use sunflower oil, vegetable oil, or avocado would be good. So better to use oil than maybe a butter to kind of. Just anything that, I mean, butter on high heat might burn, uh, although it tastes great. So you could <laughs> use butter. I think I started a little bit um, hot anyway. 
All right, and then we're gonna, so it's mostly cooked. There, we're gonna give it a nice. little flip. You want those like nice little brown spots on it. Oh, I'm impressed, you're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> I no made a few of these TV, the other yeah. night. So. <laughs> yeah, these look beautiful. I'm gonna tip these up while that crepe cooks. Look how nice those look, nice and thin. I've never had manicotti with a crepe style. I've just had those shells you buy at the store and kind of and shove really the filling in. it makes it much more delicate, you'll see. It's nice. All yeah. right, one more second on this guy. And then I'll actually probably use the one I prepped just because you want it to cool down a second before you stuff it with the filling. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, so it doesn't get runny prematurely. Right. All right, so this is good. I'm just gonna swap it out there. And nice so we and have, thin. see how, gosh, yeah, perfect consistency at least. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very impressed. All right, so it's really easy to do. And it actually goes, once you get a, like a groove, it goes pretty quickly. Yeah, because that can be a bit intimidating, knowing you have to make Oops, the crepes. That's for and, later, yeah. <laughs> The timer went the off. The timer went off. Um, all right, so now we're going to, oh, good job mixing. Thank you. <laughs> so everything's nice and incorporated in there. And then what we're going to do is just takes a couple of spoonfuls. And so this is just a cheese. Like I, my grandma would make many courses. This was one of many courses. So we would just do a, like a vegetarian, just very simple filling. Um, but you could put meat in there, sausage, ground beef. I mean, anything that you would like spinach, anything you would put in a ravioli would taste good, you know, in this. I think just about anything would taste good <laughs> in a crepe, really. <laughs> so, let's see, get this out of the way. So, we're going to fold one side over, and then a trick of my grandma's, she would put a little bit of this on kind of as a paste to hold. Oh, to seal it. To seal it. Oh, what a good so idea. that's going to hold it down a little bit better. And then, you're going to oh, put it. Oh, look at that. It is beautiful. Seam, <laughs> seam side down to help keep it together. Okay. In the pan. So, Yum. we can do one more. Oh, we're all very excited here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Filling up that pan. Fill up the pan. So you mentioned your grandmother that sh this would just be one of many courses. What other oh, courses yes. would she have? <laughs> she would typically, we'd have like a meat course, a roast of some sort, um, bruschetta. We would do, um, I mean, stuffed mushrooms. It would be a feast, a feast. <laughs> and invite for a family and friends and um, and so now we're going to just top it with some tomato sauce and I'm using a marinara sauce this is something I, I made at home real simple um, mm -hmm. you can use a meat sauce you could use any kind of sauce how Alfredo do you make your sauce. marinara so just um, olive oil onion garlic um, just a big can of tomato sauce like I use Hunt's tomato sauce just really simple and um, Little salt, pepper, very simple, very, very, very easy. Good, yes. And you could use a meat sauce or Alfredo, like any kind of sauce. And so we're gonna want to get. So be liberal there. with the sauce. Don't well, don't it's hold up, back. It's up to you. You could you could do it lightly and then save some to put on at the table too. Mm -hmm. um, I like lots of sauce. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> spread that on, and then. We will. Again, it smells really good. I know <laughs> I keep saying that. All right. And then we'll sprinkle. I mean, again, um, you can put as much on top as you want to. Um, my grandma usually would just put a little bit, but I've seen it more like a lasagna where you just have tons of mozzarella on mm -hmm. top, too. So we'll get that on there. And then we're going to put it in the oven at 375 for about 20 minutes. Oh, not too long. It's really gonna be 20 to 30. It's gonna be just enough for the sauce to heat up and the filling, you don't want a cold bite of the cheese, so the filling to get no. nice and hot <laughs> and the mozzarella to, to melt completely. And then that's Exciting. It. Well, we have a pan in the oven, so right after this quick break, we will pull it out and take a sample and we'll finally get to eat this beautiful manicotti traditional Italian creation. All right, we'll be back right after this quick break. We are back with some incredible manicotti. Thanks to our handy dandy toaster oven here on set. We have a beautiful finished product. Really, I keep saying how great it smells, <laughs> but really, if you want to make this at home and have your neighbors come over because they can smell it out through your window, yeah, the whole house you want to do it. <laughs> like heaven. And so we have, so you see the cheese got nice and melty. The sauce kind of cooks a little bit more in there. Everything was already cooked going in. We just want it to heat up. Kind of tip so. us a little bit so you can see that. Mm -hmm. I'm very impressed. How often do you cook these traditional Italian dishes? I pretty often. I mean, I like to do it on weekends when I have a whole day. Cause some of it, you know, making the sauce and it's it's you know very time intensive. So like a lot of weekend Sunday sauces and and stuff. But um, 
uh, yeah, pretty frequently. I do um, her recipes uh, quite a bit. So um, I, there's just something about those memories you have with your loved ones in the kitchen. I don't know what it is, but the food and fun, always just some of the things that you remember more than anything. My grandmother, I went out of state for college, but she lived in the town that I went to college at, and she'd have us over every Sunday for dinner. Me and my cousins. And she cooked big, she cooked big meals big as well. She cooked big feasts, and now I'll cook some of her recipes, and it just reminds me of her, and reminds me of being in her kitchen, and having her open our home to us. And you know, you get kind of lonely during college. So really great memories. Yeah, and it made me, like growing up in that house just made me love not only to eat and to cook, but to feed people. I love having people over, and I love feeding groups of people. So I love hosting at my place. And All and, right, well, yeah. I'm coming to your house. Yeah, <laughs> you're invited anytime. <laughs> just show up, and you can cook for us. Yeah. <laughs> do you uh, do you want to taste it? Oh, I would it? love to taste it. Let's see. Try to get all the cheese on there. All right. And so this recipe that we did today, like I said, makes about 10 to 12. And if you're serving, I would say one or two per person. If it's the main, if it's the main course, I would say you know count for two per person. Um, if it's just one of many courses, you know maybe one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but yeah, like I said, it's. Um, it's kind of a perfect veggie side. Have something, some meat as well, a salad. It's a great, it's perfect a great meal. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we will put this recipe up online. I feel like this is a great accompaniment to what you made last time you cooked for us. Oh, the cheese starter. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's yes, a little good. savory, we all loved like it savory here. cheese starter. Yeah. <laughs> so, kind of an idea for if you want to have a traditional Italian Easter dinner, or you just want to eat really well, <laughs> you could make that as an appetizer, and then this. Okay, now I've got to dig in. And it's great leftover too. So if you were just making a big batch for yourself, um, it's you know e Italian food's even better leftover. So <laughs> I'm gonna just want to eat everything. All of this just really is delicious. Where can you get the kind of cheese you mentioned that your grandmother loves? The Locatelli. So um, you can actually get it here in Park City. Uh, I found it at, at most of the grocery stores. Uh, Fresh Market has it already grated, which is nice. I have. I do have a lot of memories of us at the table just grating cheese for <laughs> hours to have enough hours to make great. all the recipes. So um, having it pre-grated is a luxury. Um, uh, but any Pecorino Romano will have the, kind of the same. The same taste. Stuff. This yeah. is so good. It just like melts it? <laughs> in your mouth. It's so warm and yeah, comforting. That light shell is really nice as opposed to the the yes. pasta that you're used I've to. I've never had manicotti with this crepe, and to be honest, I don't really like manicotti, <laughs> but I love this. This is absolutely delicious. My husband said the same thing. Yeah. Really? I was like, okay, wait. Let me make my version. <laughs> But so did he make his version? Did you, you know, have kind of a competition with with the, with the store bought? Yeah. Is better? Yeah. <laughs> oh no! So I made my version. He was just used to what you would normally get at, oh, at restaurants, I see, I and, he, see. and um, he did like this version. Oh well, I don't know how you wouldn't like this version. <laughs> what else do you like to cook besides Italian? You know, I cook everything. I um, I love doing lots of like Asian cuisine too. Um, I experiment with dumplings and ramen and stuff. Oh, so I, I, I really branched out, but um, well, I always you're, come back to these. You're too good of a cook, so <laughs> I suspect we'll be doing more of these segments. I would love to, yeah. But I just I love the tradition behind this and the memories that it brings to you and your family with your grandmother. She's no longer here. No, no, um, she passed away a few years ago, but she would have. Um, well, she probably would have had a lot of notes, like you put too much cheese on, <laughs> too much sauce, you, you were holding that frying pan wrong, but she, oh, she was always it. very educational in the kitchen with her. She was always instructing, which mm -hmm. was great. But. Well, I'm sure she would be very happy to know that we are cooking this. You're continuing on her tradition in the kitchen. Thanks so much, Elise, for being Thank here. You. I am way too anxious to go for it <laughs> so I can eat the rest of this. Our staff is really looking forward to having yeah, a sample as well, a and this is the perfect breakfast. What can I say? Perfect any day. Yeah, a any time, for any day. Yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, Elise. This is really a spectacular recipe. If you want to see her appetizer cheese recipe, that is on our YouTube channel. You want to check it out and get ready for having a wonderful meal in your home. We'll be back right after this quick break.